Howdy partners, I'm coming to you here in Central Park in New York City and I'm going to be trying to give you a guide to one of the most extensive and elaborate cities in the United States and world in New York, New York City. So the first thing that you need to know whenever you're coming to New York City is that there is no possible way that you can see everything that there is to offer in New York City in your one trip over here whether that be five days, seven days, even if you're living here for an entire year, there's way too much going on here in New York City. So don't fall into the trap, right, of trying to do so many things that you're really just rushing by things to ch check a list at the end of the day. Because you wanna be enjoying the stuff. There's some of the most incredible things that you can see here in New York City. And you wanna be making sure that you're not just breezing through it so you can do the old, well, I said that I did X thing. And so with that said, the second thing that y'all need to know whenever you come to New York City is please do not be afraid to be a tourist. Guess what? Whenever you're on your way here and you're coming here on a vacation, you are in fact a tourist. And so is just about every single person that you see around you, right? So don't be afraid to pull your phone out and take all the pictures and video that you want to most other people here are in your shoes as well they're enjoying themselves make sure you get all those good keepsakes and pictures of your family and you'll be able to document where and what you've done nobody cares that you're taking up the time just make sure that you're not standing in people's way whenever they're trying to walk because trust me even as a tourist myself that's even frustrating for me and it's literally everywhere so don't be that guy but do be a tourist whenever you're coming here to New York City. So the number three thing you need to know whenever you're coming to New York City, if you're like me, you're gonna really love and enjoy some of the museums that they have here. That's something that I like to do in almost every major city I go to, and you have an enormous plethora of options when you're here in New York City. But whenever you're going to places like the Met or like the Museum of Natural History, You've got to understand that these are things you cannot do in just a few hours, right? There's so many floors and such an expansive amount of art and history and sculptures and important pieces in these museums that you can literally take several days, right, whenever you're going in there and still not be able to actually stand and appreciate every single thing that they're going to have on display. For instance, even at the Met, your $25 ticket actually gets you access for three days because they understand there's so much going on there that you're probably gonna have to come back. I agree with it 100%. I found that about halfway through just what we were trying to see, right? I was running out of a, you know attention to detail. I'm walking past priceless pieces of art, right? Just like they're nothing because I've already seen a thousand different things that were incredible right and there's only so much time you can spend on each one so the lesson here that I learned and I think is important is that you actually plan out your trip to the museum I know it sounds a little bit weird but go in there get the map right or look online beforehand and figure out what you really really want to see and make sure that that's fitting into your plan there because there's almost no way when you're in these museums to see every single thing in the museum so the number four thing to know when you're here in New York City is that Central Park is a lot bigger than you think, right? It's absolutely enormous. We thought we were going to be able to just walk it all in one day. That is not the case. It's enormous, huge. You're going to be winding through to see all of the things that there are to see. And if you'd like to see another video on that, please just look down in the description and I will have a short video on Central Park in five minutes or less where we'll go into more detail about some of the things that you can see and do here in Central Park and how that works. But another thing to consider is that Central Park is not the only park in New York City. There are actually wonderful parks literally all over the place. You can find great ones in the Bronx up there, down in Brooklyn right across the bridge, or even another one over here, Bryant Park where you'll find people laying out, sunbathing, taking up the space. They're all beautifully manicured and taken care of just like Central Park. So if you're not quite up to the task of walking through this enormous area, there are other places that you can go to just to take in some greenery and get out of the jungle that is all the skyscrapers in New York City. And so the number five thing you need to know whenever you're coming to New York City is to be prepared for the centralized, compact excellence that is the area you'll find around Times Square. 
When you're looking around, it can be almost a little overwhelming, just the sheer volume of people that are always walking through there. All the bright lights and things to take in, it's an absolutely incredible thing, really, really cool experience, right? You'll have street performers there, you'll have different vendors. Uh, I do recommend, it seems a little strange, going up on the red steps. You can get a great view from up there of Times Square. That's literally just a place when you're looking at to go around and take pictures and video, right, to post up. You'll see a lot of the famous news stations there. The late shows will be there. It's like everything that you're watching on your day-to-day -day on television from your home is literally right there in Times Square. Do go check out the shopping while you're in Times Square as well. Hit up Macy's. It's another thing, it's absolutely enormous, almost like a museum itself, except it's got everything you could almost ever seemingly want to buy. It's absolutely enormous elevators, it's several floors. So it's something really to behold along with all the other shopping that you'll find there. Really, really cool place. You'll probably find yourself going back multiple times here in New York, and that's what you need to know. So the sixth thing that you need to know whenever you're coming to New York is about Chinatown and Little Italy. They're actually right by each other and compete a little bit for space, but both are extremely well worth going to. Uh, Chinatown's gonna be unique to a lot of other Chinatowns we've seen, not necessarily quite as big, but the bright lights and nature of it and how it mixes with New York makes it a really interesting place to go by. And then Little Italy is an absolute must-see for anybody who's just visiting on vacation in New York. You're gonna get the most authentic Italian food there outside of Italy. As the people say as they're trying to get you to come inside, I'm Italian, the cook's Italian, my dad's Italian, you gotta come on in and eat and the food will not disappoint. You're gonna have a great atmosphere there as well. It might be the friendliest spot that you see in New York City at that, uh, as far as customer service goes and as far as how people are treating you to come on in and get a great bite. You're, not, you're gonna leave extremely full because you know Italian food always packs it in as well. Just make sure you leave room for dessert because you're not gonna to wanna to miss the gelato and the cannoli there. It's handmade, it's really homemade, it's absolutely fantastic, something that you don't wanna miss whenever you're coming by New York City. Okay. And that brings us to the number seven thing to know when you're in New York City, is that the people here might not be giving you that same sense of hospitality every single place you go, right? It's not like when you're visiting the South where I know that I'm from, and you give that real good southern hospitality and people are happy to be waiting on you. Don't get me wrong, people will still help you here, but don't expect them to do it with a smile on their face, right? Or a great positive attitude. Yeah, they'll still sell you your ticket for the subway or they'll serve you your food, you know, at the restaurant that you're at, but there's, there's not exactly that same sense of excitement to be doing that or they're really happy at their job and happy to be serving you, so. You will avoid that and you'll, you might miss it you know, whenever you come up to New York, but just know to expect it. Everyone's still gonna help you, like I said, but they're not gonna be giving you that great, great hospitality while you're here. And with that, the number eight thing whenever you're coming to New York is the room size here is gonna be very, very small. The closer you are to downtown, the smaller that your room will be, just like everything else that you see here, right? With the, with the people with the small apartments, right? And the studios. Your hotel room will probably look a lot like that. Don't worry, you're still gonna get a bed and hopefully you're not gonna be spending too much time in it anyway because you're out here taking in all the greatness that is New York City. The number 10 thing to know whenever you're coming to New York City is that this is not gonna be your cheapest vacation that you've ever had. A lot of things here are gonna be very expensive like the transportation that we were talking about before. Don't even consider Uber, it's like 40 or $50 just to go from point A to point B inside the city. It's gonna cost you a lot. The food is gonna be relatively expensive as well everywhere you go. I know we went to even a few diners and you're talking about twice or three times the normal diner costs that you're experiencing there. Uh, the only thing that's not gonna run you an arm and a leg really truly is some of that dollar pizza, which I do really highly recommend getting while you're here in New York City. It's uh, just a part of the culture here. I don't know how it's still a dollar, but you can still get your slice of cheese pizza for one buck, and that can definitely get you by through some of the day whenever you're not really wanting to go out and sit down in these restaurants and be spending 60, 70 dollars on just two people. If you've got a few folks with you, it's gonna be running you well over a hundred dollars just for a basic dinner meal. So do watch out for that whenever you're here in New York, along with some of the other costs of everything that you're gonna be wanting to do here. 
the 11 thing you need to know about New York City is to plan your trip to New York City, right? You need to be planning what you want to spend money on, how to stay in your budget, right? You need to be planning the things that you want to see because there's simply way too much going on here in the city to do it all in one trip. So make sure that you're doing that. Make sure you're not overextending yourself, right? And you're just rushing through things. Enjoy yourself while you're here in New York City. It's one of the most unique cities in the world for a reason and a lot of fun to come to. And it's definitely a place that you'll be wanting to come back to. And so with that said, if you're enjoying this, right, please drop a like and a subscribe. If you have any questions or other things that you think are important for people to know about New York City, please go ahead and drop a comment below. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.